Hi folks, uh, welcome to tonight's webinar. Um, my name is Thomas Linner. I'm the political communications officer for the Prairies here. We're just gonna wait a couple minutes to uh, let some more people join us. So just uh, hold on for a couple minutes and we'll be right back with you. Hi everyone and welcome to the Prairie's Town Hall webinar. Sorry, I'm just trying to get straight here. Um, welcome tonight uh, and thank you for giving up your time this evening. My name is Marianne Fladoon and I'm the Regional Executive Vice President for PSAC for the Prairie Region. Um, just so you know how the webinar works, um, I'll just, this was just an opportunity to give you a bit of an update on some stuff that's happening and then we'll have an opportunity for questions. So you should see on your screen, um, a place where you can type a question in and we'll do our best to get to as many questions as we can. For those who are not on a computer, but you're on your phone, um, can we put the number up please? Um, so if you don't have access to be able to type a question in the box, you can text your question to Thomas at area code 204-898-7002. And please put your name and where you're from and what your question is. So again, if you don't, if you can't put it in the box, uh, his cell phone number to text questions is 204-898-7002. And we may not be able to get to all of your questions, but after the webinar, you'll get an email and there'll be an opportunity to enter any additional questions and please include your contact information and we'll get back to you with the information. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, a few things that I wanted to do an update on. Um, hopefully most of you have seen that PSAC has launched a national television ad campaign, uh, which is really about highlighting the dedication of public service workers throughout the whole Phoenix Pay disaster and has been ongoing for two and a half years. Uh, the campaign is called Here for Canada and it can be found at hereforcanada.ca. Uh, part of the campaign is an online video which features testimonials of PSAC members and, and really the personal damage that was caused by Phoenix because we felt it was important to share their information and that everyone understands that these are real people and this has taken a toll on people's personal lives. And so I want to say thank you to Sister Shannon Bloom, who is a USJE member from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Uh, who agreed to be part of the video and to tell her story uh, and for participating in that. We really need you to share these videos online. So if you're on social media, Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, any other social media program I don't know about, uh, please share it. Um, and there's also an opportunity for not only members, but pe uh, members of the public to be able to go sign on to support our members as they, you know, fight to get Phoenix fixed or gone. Um, and while it's not yet confirmed, the other thing I can tell you is that recently the National Board of Directors talked about uh, the Here for Canada campaign, and we've all agreed that it needs to continue, that um, it's not a campaign that was just one set of television commercials. So stay tuned for more on that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, is that right now the vast majority of federal bargaining units that we have are at the bargaining table. So for all of our Treasury Board members who are in the PA, the SV, the TC, and the EB groups, uh, your bargaining teams have been at the table several times. Um, and the FB bargaining team, which is the Border Services uh, officers, uh, they will be going back to the table early January. They've got their bargaining demands ready. CFIA, CRA, uh, and parks, um, CRA is already negotiating and CFIA and parks have elected their teams and are looking for dates early in the new year. So we have a unique situation of having almost all of our national bargaining units at the table or about to go to the table. Uh, specific to Treasury Board, something that I think um, members really need to know uh, is that we've been prepared from day one. Uh, we've had our bargaining demands, we have tabled our demands, we've made our presentations, and the employer has refused to engage in real negotiation. So they've not countered with anything, they've not uh, presented a lot of the issues that they say they want to discuss. And so in October of this year, our national president, Chris Elward, in conversation uh, with Scott Bryson, who's the Treasury Board president, uh, Scott Bryson confirmed that he has yet to give his teams a mandate. Uh, so while your elected representatives, your bargaining team members have gone with full intention to negotiate, uh, Treasury Board, they don't even have a mandate yet. Uh, so we put them on notice at the last round uh, that this time around they need to come to the table and they need to negotiate or we're done. Uh, we're not going to drag this process out and Scott Bryson was clearly told uh, to give his team some mandate. We're not sure what's going to happen uh, with the FB and the CFIA and the CRA. Um, they haven't exchanged demands yet, uh, but CRA is not making much progress either. So uh, we have for Treasury Board tabled economic proposals at 3.75% per year um for three years um and we've also tabled a number of wage adjustments and allowances um, and a lot of other language um, all of the demands for these tables can be found on the national website both the demands that we put on the table but also what the employer put on the table uh, those are available just go to bargaining on the national website and click on your table and you will see the demands uh, the teams are going back next week. Um, the four Treasury Board tables that are actively negotiating are going back next week. Uh, and the Common Issues table will be meeting the week after. Um, and, and they need your support. Um, so if you want to know who's representing you on one of these national bargaining teams, you can go to the PSAC Prairies website, and the address will be up on the screen at the end of the webinar. Uh, and go to the bargaining team section, there's a tab, and you will actually see a picture of your bargaining team member, uh, a little bio of their background, and also a, a link where you can click and send them an email. So if you see a bargaining demand that you have a personal uh, story to go with, or you've had grievances on a certain issue, it would really be valuable for the team uh, to know that, so we would ask you to send that. Also, while they're at the table, uh, any messages of support, whether it's a personal message, it's on behalf of your local or your workplace, uh, we would really encourage you to send those messages along. Okay, um, okay. Uh, the topic that um, is timely, 
uh, and I'm sure there will be some questions, is regarding the membership dues. Uh, and I know we've heard from a lot of members uh, about uh, the, the correction to membership dues that, that is because of Phoenix. Uh, and the reality is, you know, Phoenix Pay has been a disaster from since the day it was started. And, you know, members pay has been overpaid, underpaid. Um, but one of the things that's also been happening is that union dues have not been corrected, uh, have not been collected properly. And it is the employer's responsibility to collect those dues and to submit them to the union. And so we've been trying for a long time because the computer systems that we were using uh, didn't match. So we were not able to put any changes in from our end. Uh, if we knew, say for example, your local changed um, the dues that's coming to your local, you passed a motion at your AGM uh, to increase or decrease dues, we've not been able to implement that because the systems wouldn't talk. Uh, and our priority was really about getting getting members paid. We tried over a year ago to have this change file run, which is, you know, a throwback to the old days of when you had change tapes. Um, and Treasury Board put a stop to it. Uh, so we didn't want to have to wait this long uh, and have, you know, arrears um, basically continue to build up or to not be able to give members refunds or people who are not members that should have never paid dues uh, or they moved into a different union position, we've not been able to refund those members either uh, because all of that has to run through the employer system so that it's reflected properly on your T4. Uh, we know that uh, the majority of members that are in an arrear situation owe less than $300. Um, and, you know, at this point, it, it's because it's been cumulative. These are the union dues that are paying, um, that are covering the expenses of negotiating. So sending your bargaining team members to Ottawa for union education, uh, for the, you know, representation and, and adjudications. Um, and, and we want to make sure that it's done as accurately as possible. And so I'm sure the question is, this is really crappy timing. It's right before Christmas. Um, and the fact is there is no good time. If we would wait, then we have members who are, you know, basically paying off bills after the holidays. Uh, and then, you know, then you're, there, there's always going to be something. Uh, we literally wanted this done a year ago. We were ready to do this. We told the employer um, in early October that, you know, we wanted this to happen. Um, and basically the delay is, is on their backs. Um, we have done as much as we can um, around to get Phoenix fixed. And I know there's some concerns about that. And, and just, you know, I just want to recap a few of the successes that we've had on this. Keeping in mind, this is the employer. This is a federal government, both the conservative government who bought the system, knowing it wouldn't be able to do the, the, the work that we needed it to do, uh, but also the liberals for actually flipping the switch and turning it on. So since that time, some of the things that we have been able to be successful on is as the as your union we've negotiated compensation for out-of-pocket expenses and i would encourage anyone who has out-of-pocket nsf fees late fees interest charges on credit cards uh, to submit those in uh, we went to court to ensure that there was support for members who were on disability maternity and paternal leave uh, when they were coming back they weren't getting paid and they had no access to the system uh, and so we won that battle in court. Uh, we forced the government to expand access to emergency pay. And we also understand that a lot of departments are still having trouble with that. So if that happens and members are being denied, you need to contact your component uh, and or the regional office. Uh, we pushed the government to get more compensation advisors hired. Uh, and we also got the Labor Board, uh, the Federal Labor Board, to declare that the government illegally failed uh, to meet the collective agreement deadlines because as much as um, 
they knew what the deadlines were and we agreed to an extension, they still couldn't meet it. Uh, and so what are we what are we still doing? Well, we're keeping Phoenix in the public eye. That's the whole idea with the Here for Canada campaign. We're lobbying MPs, we're, we're challenging MPs, uh, we are challenging politicians, and I, I want to say a shout out to the members in Calgary uh, who uh, sent a message to um, uh, Trudeau today. Uh, in Calgary, we sent a message to Trudeau in Edmonton. Uh, a while back, we sent a message to him in Winnipeg, uh, and we continue to do that. Uh, we're currently working on negotiating damages uh, for our members as a result of the Phoenix fiasco. And um, uh, there's no resolution on that yet because once again, the people at the table don't have a mandate from the government. Um, so I know there's also a lot of questions about uh, on, on dues about you know how much is owed and how much should you be paying. And the reality is every single member, every single local is different. So every member pays the same for PSAC, it's a percentage, uh, but every component, when you go to your component convention, uh, determines their own dues rate. Some are percentages, some are flat rate. Every local also has the opportunity to set their own dues structure. Some are a flat dollar amount, some are $2, some are $5, some are percentage. Uh, and so once you're assigned to the right local, that's what determines um, what your dues is. So uh, it's it's not possible for us to say, you know, everybody, if you are a CR5, you should be paying this amount. It, it really depends not only which component you're in, but which local you're in. Um, and to find out more about the PSAC dues portion, you can find that information on the national website. Uh, I also want to say that uh, the government had agreed that they would send a communication out to all federal employees through the government system. Uh, that was agreed to and it didn't happen. It's another failure of the employers that, that chose not to do that. Some did, some did not. Uh, they were supposed to send out a communication saying that, you know, this was happening. Um, you can go to the PSAC website to fill in this form if you have any questions or concerns uh, and they chose to ignore that. Uh, so once again, the employer has failed us on that. Um, anything to do with the change file, um, uh, you can go on the national website and there is a form that you fill in as much information as you have. Um, and we have a team dedicated to this right now and so they they are going through them as quickly as they can uh and it's you know usually about a week give or take a day or two uh someone will get back to you and then you'll be able to have some of those conversations um the other thing to know is that if uh, an arrears of dues is a financial hardship for you you need to go on this form and check off a little box that says this is related to hardship. Uh, and so if you need a longer time to pay off uh, the arrears, we will do everything we can to make that arrangement. Uh, and those take top priority. And you don't have to tell us what your hardship is. Uh, if you click the box and you say it is a hardship, uh, if you have any other concerns, uh, by all means, send me, and you'll see my email at the end, send me an individual email with your situation and we'll do everything we can to assist. Uh, this is not about causing even more hardship for members uh, and it's something that we wish we never had to do and if the government had not, you know, implemented Phoenix, we would not be in this situation or if they made sure that these changes could have been implemented from day one. Um, that absolutely uh, was not what we wanted to do. So just um, a couple other things happening in the region that's related to our federal members uh, who are under the Phoenix system and are in bargaining. Uh, but I just wanna fill you in because we have members under provincial jurisdiction. Uh, so we have members uh, in Regina who work for Casino Regina. Uh, it is a crown corporation in the province of Regina. And the provincial government in their budget last year um, 
uh, basically implemented, legislated a 3.5% wage cut across the board for all Crown Corporation employees. Uh, we said, on behalf of our members, as did the members, we said, hell no, we're not accepting that. Uh, and together with all of the unions, we're still fighting that. Uh, it's on the table, it's off the table. Um, but the reality is, regardless of which government you're under, we're facing these challenges. And, and as we're seeing changes in government and, and a shift to the right, um, it's something that, you know, maybe today you're not facing it, but tomorrow it could be. Uh, and so, you know, there's an opportunity to support those members. Uh, we also in Manitoba have um, members working at Deer Lodge Centre, which is a seniors hospital uh, a facility, uh, live-in facility. And um, so our members are represented by the Union of Veterans Affairs employees. And the provincial government here has decided that all unions in healthcare uh, should go through a representation vote because they don't like the number of collective agreements even though all of the unions presented options to them on how to do bargaining more efficiently to meet what they needed, uh, they basically didn't care. So uh, we have been, um, we've done a couple of rallies out at Deer Lodge and I wanna thank the members in the Winnipeg area uh, for supporting our members at Deer Lodge. Uh, and um, we are continuing to push the government of Manitoba and the management at Deer Lodge Center uh, to say that these members are PSAC members, they have a right to stay PSAC members, uh, and no provincial government should have the option to be able to take that away from them. So that's basically some of the updates. Um, I went really quickly because I do want to give people an opportunity for some questions. Um, so, as I said, you can either text your question to Thomas at 204-898-7002 or you can put them in the, yes, I know, but why is it, there we go. Where am I going? There. That went, sorry. Technical, we're getting there. Oh, ta-da, there it is, okay. Uh, sorry, the little question box was really, really small for me. Um, so, okay, we've got a few questions. So I will start at, I'll start at the top and we'll get through as many as we can. Uh, so the first question is, is there a class action lawsuit started for compensation for hardship as a result of Phoenix? If so, how does one join it? Uh, no, there is not uh, a class action lawsuit because as employees under the Public Service Labor Relations Act, um, we do not have access to a class action lawsuit. Uh, it is not an option available to us. It is basically that right has been legislated away from us. We cannot do it. Uh, there was, as I'm sure some people heard, uh, a class action lawsuit um, um, however the wording is, they basically file an intent for a class action lawsuit uh, in Quebec. And what the Quebec government came back at, or court came back and said is that for members that are represented by a union, they must deal with the situation through the union. The class action lawsuit that is proceeding is for unrepresented employees only. So students, casuals, um, it, you know, at the end of the day, from what I understand, class action lawsuits could take 10, 15 years. Uh, and so we're actively negotiating. But the quick and dirty answer is no, we don't have the legislated right to do a class action lawsuit. Um, will the union be providing a breakdown accounting of how union dues arrears were calculated? Uh, if you believe that the arrears that have been identified for you are incorrect, please go in and fill out the form uh, and they're getting to those as quickly as they can. Um, and if you can give as much information as possible, uh, then, then um, uh, they can 
show you where the calculation is or if there's information that the employer has not provided us that you have that would affect that calculation, you can provide that information. Uh, so it's, it's not automatically being printed out for everyone, um, but if you believe there's been something wrong that it doesn't make sense, uh, please fill out the form and identify as much information as you can. Um, oh, here's, yes, I've heard this. I have a past colleague who does not work for the federal government anymore, but got a letter from P, from PSAC saying she owes $100 in dues. What should she do? Um, so we are not collecting. We don't have the ability to collect past dues from retirees or those who have left the public service. Uh, so to ensure that um, this person is not continuing to get any notices. Uh, if they can go on the website, uh, on, the, on the contact form and basically just say, as of this date, I no longer work for the government or I retired on this date, uh, then that we will go into our system and that will be canceled. The reality is with Phoenix and the Pension Center, those two databases have not been able to talk to each other. Uh, so unfortunately, a lot of retirees uh, are not, they don't show in our system as being retired. They show as, hey, this person hasn't paid dues. Uh, but there is, we have no legal responsibility or ability to collect and we have no intention of that. Uh, so they should just go ahead and do that. Okay. Um... There's another question about um, calculations. Um, pay stubs do not show anything outside of union arrears. Um, and to be able to cross, cross reference pay stubs to verify the amount. Uh, again, the problem is this is all the employer system, right? Um, and so we have to go on the information they have. So if they haven't moved you to an acting position or to another local or to another component, um, the calculation that you have is based on the information that we have. So it, again, if, there's, if, if it doesn't jive uh, with where you think it should be, please go on and um, uh, and ask for uh, a breakdown on, on what you owe. We have one by text. Oh, any update on the SSO negotiations? They're heading to arbitration. Please tell us how long we should wait for the results. Thank you. Okay, an un, un Phoenix related question and a fair question. And um, my apologies because yes, SSO, so the statistical uh, survey operations, uh, Stats Canada basically, uh, has been negotiating for a very long time. Uh, they have just, they've gone to arbitration. Um, unfortunately, there's no timelines around arbitration as to when a decision will be released. Um, so we're really not sure uh, when it's going to come down. Uh, but what I will say is that if you are able to, if you go to the national website, uh, you can go into request emails and you can specifically say which, which bargaining unit you want updates on. Uh, and usually as soon as there's any information, we try to within a day to put that notice out. Um, so yeah, unfortunately there's no timelines. Um, but as soon as it's out, we will release the full document so that members will be able to see exactly exactly what um, um, where they're at. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yo, did the federal government give a date when they think Phoenix would be fixed and all files taken care of? Well, I think they learned their lesson when they said October 31st of 2017, they would have it fixed uh, and they were no, nowhere near it. Uh, the reality is no, uh, we have no idea when this is gonna be fixed. Um, it seems as one thing happens, you know, I think the numbers, the actual numbers of, of outstanding uh, 
pay action requests is reducing. But the reality is because of all of the confusion, uh, all of the errors, the overpaid, underpaid, not paid, um, they're basically going to have to do an audit of everyone's pay file. Uh, and, you know, some of us remember a time when we had compensation advisors in the workplace who could actually sit down with a pad of paper, a pencil, and a calculator and would tell you exactly where you were at. Uh, we don't have that anymore. Um, you know, the, the, um, the, that knowledge and experience is unfortunately gone um, from when the conservative government basically eliminated all those positions in anticipation of Phoenix. Um, so at this point, I don't know. Um, what I will say is that we truly, truly need to continue to hold this government's feet to the fire uh, because they, you know, their answer of, well, you know, we're doing everything we can. Yes, we understand it's horrible. Uh, you know, we feel terrible. Well, they need to know that that doesn't pay the bills. Uh, and so, you know, we can take them to court and we can do all these other things, but every MP across this country should know um, the impact it's having on their constituents. And on that note, uh, if anyone is so inclined, here in the prairies, we developed a lobby kit uh, and it's about 32 pages. It has all of the MP information in the prairies. Uh, it has um, a backgrounder on Phoenix, basically a whole timeline of everything that's occurred. Uh, there's a script to go and talk to your MP if you're a Treasury Board member. There's a script if you're not a Treasury Board member. Uh, and a lot of background in there. Now, it's not on the website because it is a lobby kit. Um, so it's we didn't want to put it on the website where basically the MPs can pull it down and see what we're going to say. Um, but it is available to any member uh, who wants to go talk to your MP, regardless of which party they are. It doesn't matter which party they're from. Every MP should know. Uh, so if you would like a copy of that, uh, please send me an email or contact your regional office. Uh, all of the regional offices have it. They can print you a copy if you want. Uh, and there's also a flyer that you can leave with the MP and they can give you some printed copies of that. And we would really appreciate, um, you know, if they make any commitments or they make any promises uh, that um, um, you let us know what the MP actually said. Uh, because, you know, sometimes I make promises and they don't follow up. So as much as I'd like to give a timeline, um, let me put it to you this way. This is... This is, tell, I wasn't going to go there, but I'll go there. So for Treasury Board, um, as our EVPs were assigned to bargaining tables, so I'm assigned to the PA table. And so I sit with them as often as I can. The Treasury Board negotiators, uh, so the legislation says that they should pay out collective agreements or implement collective agreements within 90 days. The last round, because of Phoenix, they said, yeah, we need 150. And because we knew that 90 was never going to happen anyway, um, you know, in negotiation, so we gave them 150 days. They had no intention of meeting that 150 days, and it wasn't until a day or two before that deadline was up that they kind of went, yeah, no, we're not going to be able to do this. So as we are sitting at the bargaining table this time, and we're asking the government for more around Phoenix, for more around damages, um, you know, for, for interest on everything, they turn around and say, yeah, we need to talk about that 150, we need more. So they have no intention in having this system fixed. And the other thing that I think, I, I think everyone needs to know and, and to question is the fact that retroactivity, retroactive pay is not a given. Uh, it's something that we negotiate all the time and it's something that as federal government, in, in all the history that I know, we've always gotten retroactive pay. They don't want to give you retro pay. They want to look at options for retroactive pay. So we don't know, like, I, I'm thinking they have no idea when this thing is going to be fixed. Um, 
And honestly, I think, you know, the pressure needs to continue to say that enough is enough and, and they really do need to, to make a true effort to fix it or to get onto a new system. Uh, and, you know, we have no idea how long that's going to take. If there's another company out there that, you know, says, or PIPS members, our position has always been, we don't care what system it is as long as it pays our members. So not the answer you wanted, but sorry. Um, oh, okay. Uh, this is from Mandy saying, I don't have a question, but more of a thank you to the hardworking bargaining teams. I appreciate you and I know you work and fight tirelessly for us all. So thank you at for from Mandy at local 40008. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we will make sure that message gets passed along. And I would actually encourage you to go on the Prairie's website and, um, you know, send off a little note um, to your bargaining team members, especially next week. So, oh, great tip here from uh, from Sylvie. Um, so, regarding the the amount of dues that you pay to your local, uh, individuals can contact their local for the percentage amounts for PSAC component and local. Uh, and I guess I haven't looked at one of the mud sheets for a long time, uh, but every local gets a green membership list. Um, that basically shows uh, shows the names, um, and so Sylvie's reminding me that the percentages are located in the top right of their mud list. Um, and for USJE members at the RCMP, it's posted on the F Division bulletin board. There you go. So if you want to know uh, what your local dues are, uh, speak to a local executive and um, and um, Take a look at the mud sheet to see what the what the what the percentage is. Some do some do a straight dollar amount. Um, so um, yes, there's a comment about retro pay not being pensionable, and yes, that's correct. Oh wait a minute, maybe not. Our no, because it's retroactive, it's salary, so it should be pensionable. You've got me questioning myself. I'm going to have to check that. Perfect. And another message from a member, and this is back to the bargaining team, saying thank you for the work that you do, for the hard work that you do. And I'm going to assume that's directed at the bargaining team members. Okay. Whoops, one sec. My apologies, I missed a question in, in the uh, scrolling through. So uh, the question was, to what specific date is the union going back to collect dues? Uh, so it would be from March of 2016, uh, when for, for those that were on the system. And the calculations that you got uh, were up to the end of August 2018. Um, so we're not going anywhere past, um, you know, when Phoenix was implemented. Um, now, it's always been PSAC policy because this stuff has always happened over the years, right? Somebody uh, is in a PSAC position, they get reclassified to a PIPS position, um, you know, and then PIPS wants their dues and, and you know, so there's always a refund process. Um, in this situation, we did not limit the refund. Um, we've had situations where somebody files a classification grievance, 
five years later they get a decision that they should have been in a PIPS position, well, we don't, our policy had never been to refund five years of PSAC dues because guess what, they got service for five years. Um, we would only go back a year. So then, you know, we would refund PSAC dues and they would pay P, uh, PIPS dues. Anything related to Phoenix, it doesn't matter if it was from day one or if it was a few months, uh, we are refunding that in its entirety. Um, there, we're not, we're not cutting that down at all. Uh, if you were owed a refund throughout this whole period, uh, you will get, uh, you will get the refund. Um, for the arrears collection, and I know this was a bit of confusion uh, in in the wording, and I know we looked at different ways to to basically frame the text so that it made sense. <clears throat> we col for if you owe arrears, we will collect up to the amount of one year of dues total, not not go back for one year. So for example, um, a lot of members that we were unable to determine what their dues was because of Phoenix, uh, they were put in at a base rate of $40 a month. Um, so they were paying $40. Let's say um, you should have been paying $60. So now you owe at the end of it, you owe $240. No, that's a bad example. Um, in total, if your arrears, even if they go back more than a year, um, as long as they don't total more than what you would pay in its entirety at the correct rate for your dues, um, that would be as much as we would take back. Yes, I hope I haven't confused people even more. Um, okay. Um, so, yes, thank you. Retro is pensionable. Thank you, Dawn, uh, PA bargaining team member and HR compensation person. I, I caught myself on that one. Um, so I, I think, um, and, and just to Valerie, who says, I thought we were only going back one year, one year's worth of dues. So that that's the difference. So if you just owed a little bit more every month, um, we would only take back one year's worth of dues. Um, so it's the value. So in total, uh, in a year, let's say you are paying $60 a month. That's a total of $720 a year that you pay for union dues. If your arrears in total were 800, uh, we would only collect 720. Uh, and so and that's being done, that's being taken off one paycheck at a time, uh, no more than the value of one month of dues at a time. So, and I think this is where some some folks had, you know, I, I heard, you know, triple. So you're paying 40, you should be paying 70. So, what happened this week is your dues were adjusted to the correct rate of 70 and an additional 70 was taken for arrears. So that's how you get from 40 to 140. If that's a hardship and, and again, you don't have to explain it, please go on the website and, and they will, our, our membership administration people will work with you. Uh, to see what the most, you know, what what you can do and to stretch up, stretch that out over a longer period of time. Um, <clears throat> but of course, that does come off your, uh, that, that does get put onto your T4. Um, so I know, 
there's a question here about affecting, how is this affecting T4s? Um, if you have an arrears and you're paying more, uh, it actually comes directly off your taxable income. Uh, so it's a deduction right off the top of your taxable income. Uh, if you get a refund, that will also show on your T4 because in previous years, it reduced your taxable income. Uh, so, you know, unless it's major significant, I you know, it, it shouldn't uh, affect the calculations too much, but it absolutely will, and everyone's tax circumstances are different. So, um, I don't want to make any. Um, um, yeah, everybody everybody's situation is different, and it's individual. So, um, but it will affect uh, your taxes, which is another reason that we didn't want to wait. Uh, and why we wanted to get this done because there's already so many issues with T4s. So, um, you know, the longer we wait, uh, the longer that, you know, it, it continues that uh, tax implication. So, okay. Valerie's got the other one. She's all good. Okay. Uh, Mandy, so I've been with the federal government for one and a half years and not paid a penny in pension benefits or union dues. When they come to collect, which they started last pay period, you mentioned if it was too much taken from your check, you could click a box saying due to hardship, you could get arrears reduced. Can you tell me where to find that? Yes. If you go to... Um, the main website is psacunion.ca and it should be right at the top, um, uh, the membership form, but the actual address, so it's psacunion.ca slash membership hyphen dues hyphen inquiries hyphen form. And Thomas is just going to go and put that on the screen for you so that you can actually see that. So if there's any questions whatsoever related to, ooh, goodness, related to the change file, um, please go to, um, to that form, put any information that you have. Um, and um, somebody, like I said, we have a, a team basically working. Regional offices are taking turns answering phone calls uh, because we realize that that um, this is confusing and frustrating um, and not something that we wanted to take this long to do. We wanted this done immediately, but uh, it was not possible. Okay. Um, I don't have any more questions. Nobody else wants to know anything. Um, gotcha. So is there any other questions? Just going to check. Thanks, Melissa. I am getting a new photo. Um, so I'm I'm not. Um, we we had this scheduled for an hour, um, and so I think one of the questions when we close off is if you want to do more of these. Um, and so I, I think it's it's really important that um, you have an opportunity to ask questions to get updates. Uh, and so I would like to do this more. Um, I would like to get you know, more members to come in. Um, so um, I'm absolutely um, uh, 
willing to do that because as your elected representative, I represent you and, and, and I want to hear what's going on. Um, so we will, um, uh, we will go ahead um, and do more of them. Oh, geez, there's more questions coming up now. Um, please fight for telework in the next collective agreement. Uh, that has absolutely been um, uh, an issue at the bargaining table, telework, alternate work arrangements. Uh, so uh, you'll see that in the package. And um, I would encourage if you have any examples of it uh, to please go onto the Prairie's website um, and um, find your bargaining team member. I'm not sure which table you're with. Um, I'm thinking possibly PA table. And um, let them know if you have any background, any information, any arguments that you would like to present on that, because that just gives your team um, that personal thing so that when the employer says, oh no, nobody has a problem with that, uh, we can say, no, we know there's been grievances. We know there's been problems. So thank you. Um, I heard from a civilian member last night that PIPS has started deducting union dues. Do I know anything? I had enough keeping up with our stuff. So um, I hadn't heard that, but it wouldn't surprise me because all of the unions have been waiting for the change file. Um, so I, I think um, uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me to see they're going in there, but honestly, I've been focusing on our members. And um, um, so I'm not really sure where they're at. And there was another, where was Glenn's question? How much is the special levy? You had to ask me that question. Um, I don't have the budget in front of me, um, but I will tell you this. So January 1st of 2019, the new budget that was passed at the PSAC convention in May of this year becomes effective. Um, with everything combined, including um, because the pension adjustment levy, um, um, the word just escaped me. Anyway, that uh, the pension levy that we had uh, is was done in October. The National Board of Directors said we don't need those funds anymore uh, in the pension fund, uh, pension solvency, thank you. Um, uh, we don't need that anymore. So that amount, because we couldn't, we couldn't stop it even if we wanted to because of Phoenix. Um, so that money from October 1st forward uh, has gone into a general levy, which was already part of the budget. Uh, it wasn't a decision that the, the board made. It was already in the budget that if our revenues drop below a uh, certain amount, this other levy would kick in. We had chosen not to do that, uh, but because we couldn't stop it, the National Board of Directors agreed that it would go over. With all of that combined, January 1st, 2019, if we are able to with Phoenix, the PSAC portion of dues will be reduced. Uh, we actually had a dues decrease. Because one of the things that we do now with resolutions, uh, when we pass resolutions at convention, if it is something that happens once, it is identified uh, and it doesn't automatically get rolled into the next budget that, you know, you just keep putting things on top of it. Um, so anything that's one time is pulled out uh, and doesn't go to the start of building the budget the next time. So. Uh, all that to say, I can find that uh, information and um, actually that would be really good information. I think we'll put something up about dues uh, and how it works and we'll include that information. But January 1st, there will actually be a dues decrease. And um, there's another question. Are there, and and so to be clear, this was like about an update uh, because I there's a question saying maybe this isn't the right place to ask this. This is your opportunity. 
Um, I'm your elected rep. You can ask me anything. If I know the answer, I'll tell you. If I don't, I'll get it. Um, and so change file in Phoenix is, is first and foremost in people's minds, but you can ask me anything. So the question is, are there specific educational requirements for the treasurer position with locals? Uh, and I will say in the constitution, uh, there is nothing. Um, so whether your component has uh, anything specific, that's something you would have to check with your component, um, or you know, is there something in the bylaws? But I'll be honest, um, I've never seen anywhere where there's a requirement for any specific educational requirements. That answers that question. Okay. So we are like right on our one minute, uh, one hour. Um, you will see up on the screen uh, the toll-free number for my office here in Winnipeg, uh, my email address, uh, and there's the Prairie's website. So there's a lot of information. I would encourage you uh, to go um, uh, to go to the website. That's where all the education is listed, where you can register for courses. You can find out about our committees. Uh, if you're interested in political action, find your nearest area council, uh, the regional women's committees, human rights committees, young worker committees. Uh, if you're interested in any of those, uh, please, please, please contact your regional office. They'll get you on the list. Uh, there is a place in our union for everyone. Uh, and so depending what your interest is, uh, you know, absolutely. Uh, if you have any more questions, by all means, send an email or call the regional office. Uh, and yes, the dues decrease for January 1st is applicable to not just all PATC, it is applicable to all PSAC members, whether you're federal or provincial. And um, on that note, I want to thank everyone for taking time and um, glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for the comments in the chat box and we'll do it again. Thanks and have a good evening.